Water, water everywhere, except we can't use it. This is the big problem with ocean sailing. We're in this huge body of water and none of it we can use for human consumption. Last year, Sophie and I started to do a lot more extended anchoring and this was our single biggest limiting factor with anchoring. As we didn't have a water maker on board, we really had two options to get fresh water. We could lift the anchor, head into port, fill up the tanks with the hose and head back out. Or we could take a dinghy into shore with some jerry cans, fill the cans up, bring them back, fill up the tanks. Only problem with that was we didn't have any jerry cans. So this winter we started to discuss the merits of buying a water maker. Went online and looked at a lot of name brands, had a bunch of cool features and functions and we got really excited, but they were all well outside of our budget. And with all the projects that we had going on on Polar Seal, we thought maybe this wasn't the right time for a water maker. But one of you, our viewers, tipped us off to the DIY water maker path and that really got me thinking, what is a water maker? So that's what this series is all about. In our first video, we're gonna talk about what a water maker is, what the different parts and components are and what they do. We're also gonna look at some pros and cons to name brand water makers and the DIY path. In our second video, we're gonna actually install a water maker on Polar Seal so you'll get to see exactly how we did it and some of the thought process we went through in installing the water maker. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy your water. So what is a water maker? Well, a water maker is really just a fancy name for a big filtration system. And what we're trying to do is filtrate particulate out of the water, particularly salt, which is not good for us to drink. After we do that, we'll then have fresh, clean drinking water, which we can use for all kinds of stuff, like 50 minute showers, a fountain display in the V-Birth, or even just washing our feet. Why washing our feet? I don't know. The water maker does this using two systems. The first being just a normal filtration system, like something you would find under your sink or maybe in a Brita filter. The second part is reverse osmosis filter or a reverse osmosis membrane. And you may be asking yourself, well, what is a reverse osmosis filter or membrane? Osmosis or the process of osmosis is something that occurs naturally in nature. So for example, if I take a bucket of water and I put a membrane in that bucket and a membrane is just something that allows some particulate to flow through and not others. And then let's say on one side of the membrane, I put fresh water and the other side I put salt water that fresh water naturally has a tendency to flow into the salt water, and that's caused osmosis. But what we want to do is get that salt out of the water, so we want to reverse the process. And for that, we're gonna use a reverse osmosis membrane. Then we're also gonna use some high pressure and some power to force the water through and make that process happen. And we'll show you more about that later in the video. So now that we know how a water maker works, what we're gonna do is take you through the entire process of a water maker. And we're gonna start at the beginning from when we get salt water on our boat through the through haul, all the way from when we get fresh water out and put it into our water tanks. I'm gonna take you through each part in the system, explain what it does and what happens when it goes on to the next part of the system. So the first piece of our water maker puzzle is the through haul. And a through haul is really just a hole in the boat that allows some type of fluid to either go in or outside of the boat. We have a lot of different through hauls on the boat. We have a through haul in our sink to allow sink water to drain out. We have a through haul in our engine to allow salt water to come in to cool the engine. We even have some in the bathroom. For a water maker, what we're trying to do is get salt water from the outside of the boat in so we can do our magic salt water water maker process. Some manufacturers recommend that there is a dedicated through haul for their water makers. Others don't care and don't mind if you tap onto an existing through haul. For Polar Seal, we're actually gonna use a through haul that was made for our seawater foot pump. This will allow us to not drill another hole in the boat and since we don't need the seawater foot pump because we'll have fresh water all over the boat, uh, we're going to use that through haul that's already in place. From the through haul, we're going to a sea water strainer. And this would be similar to the strainer that you find in your engine. And really what it's there for is to filter out big chunks of crud that might come in through the through haul. This could be anything from seaweed to big chunks of shark poop. The next piece of the puzzle is a low pressure pump. Because parts of our water maker are gonna be above the water line, we need a way to keep 
air bubbles from getting in the system and keep a really even flow of water throughout the system. And to do that, we're going to use this low pressure pump. If we were to have all of our water maker below the water line, this maybe wouldn't be necessary, but because our system is modular, we're able to put pieces all over, thus having a low pressure pump helps keep the water flow very stable and clean. From the low pressure pump, we're gonna go to a one-way valve. And that's this little doohickey right here. And I'm not gonna get into much about why there's a one-way valve here. I'm gonna talk about that later in the video, I promise. But just know that we're gonna have a little one-way valve here. After the one-way valve is going to be a series of water filters. And that is these guys right here. And these filters are here to filter out some more particulates. So in the first one, it's a 20 micron filter. So that means that anything below 20 microns in size will pass through, anything above will be filtered out. And then from that 20 micron, we're gonna to go to a five micron. So we're filtering out even smaller particulate. After the water filters, we need to remember that the water is still salty and we need to have a way to get that salt out of the water. And to do that, we need to pump it through our membrane. But the only way to get it through the membrane in a way to remove the salt is to have it under high pressure. So from those filters, we're going to take the water to a high pressure pump. And to do that, we're gonna use the power of magic. And now we have our high pressure pump. <laughs> so water will flow through here into this pump and that's going to increase the pressure anywhere between 600 and 800 PSI, which is a requirement for the membrane. We'll talk about that in a minute. From the high pressure pump, we're going to go into a special hose and that's called the high pressure hose. Because we're operating under such high pressures, we need to make sure that we have a hose that can handle those pressures. If we were to use a garden hose or a normal water hose on the boat, it would just erupt and explode. So here we're going to use a specially designed hose that is capable of 3000 PSI. We're just using 900 so it should be able to take it. And it has some special ends on it, specifically designed to handle these pressures. From the high pressure hose, now we get to the part where the magic happens and we get to remove the salt from the system. So we're talking about the reverse osmosis membrane and that really has two parts. The first part is the high pressure vessel. So if I can get my assistant to hand me the high pressure vessel. Thank you, Sophie, so nice. You're my Vanna White. So the my high pressure- uh, My Vanna White. What is Vanna White? Uh, you, one of our viewers will explain. The reason we have a thing called a high pressure vessel is because if I were to take the membrane and put it inside, let's say a cardboard tube, when we put a lot of pressure in there, the cardboard tube would just explode. So we need to have a vessel that's capable of handling these pressures that we're talking about as well. So this is specifically designed for that. Inside of the high pressure vessel, we're going to have the actual membrane itself. So Sophie, this is the membrane that we're gonna use, the reverse osmosis membrane. And this membrane right now is inside some packaging because we haven't installed our, uh oh, that's yeah. not working. Your assistant is going to help yeah. you with the post-its. We, ha we haven't installed our water maker yet, so we kept it inside the packaging, but this membrane will eventually go inside the pressure vessel. On each side of the pressure vessel, then there's some ends, and these are specifically designed for these pressure vessels. So you place this in, this particular piece here is where the high pressure line will go and we'll put that in this side. And then we have another end here. And this will go on the other side of the membrane. And this is what we're gonna kind of call the crossroads. And this is going to control the pressure inside the vessel. And it's also going to be the discharge of our briny water, our salty briny discharge, and our fresh water. And I will explain those pieces here. This is where we actually control the pressure uh, that's going through our reverse osmosis membrane. So we'll have a pressure gauge. And we can control that through a control valve here. So when we first start up our water maker, we're gonna have this control valve all the way open. So there's really no pressure flowing through the system. Uh, it's just water is moving through. And as we start cranking this up, it's going to increase the pressure. And that's where we get pressure built up inside our reverse osmosis membrane. The water flowing through this pipe, this end of the pipe, is actually our brine. And the brine is this salty, sludgy kind of discharge that we're getting out of the reverse osmosis membrane. So it's going to leave through this brine discharge valve. And from here, it's going to flow through a pipe and off a through hole through the boat and off the boat. We will hopefully never see it again. We also here have a fresh water outlet. 
So this freshwater outlet's going to be producing all that awesome drinking water and fountain water that we're going to have in our V-Birth. That's going to go through a pipe and eventually go through a flow meter. We want to know how much fresh water flow we have going into their tanks. We want to know so we know how long it's going to take to fill or maybe we have an idea of how much water we need for that day. This flow meter will give us that indication. This one's set for gallons per hour, but they have them in liters per hour as well. In theory, the water right now should be good enough for us to drink. So after this flow meter, we could essentially just run a pipe to our water tank and have the water flowing through there. But we want to have a way to test the water. So we're gonna put a three-way valve into our system. Uh, we don't have one today, so through the magic of the internet, we're gonna put one here. And that three-way valve is gonna go two places. One place is going to be to our sink, and the next place is going to be to our fresh water tank. So when we first turn our water maker on, we're actually gonna have this three-way valve selected to go to the sink, and that's gonna allow water uh, to come through. We'll be able to put a cup or a glass there, and then we're gonna be able to test the water, and we test the water through this really cool device called a TSD monitor, and TSD stands for Total Dissolved Solids. The TSD monitor is a way for us to measure the quality of the water that we are putting out. Minerals are not necessarily bad for us. Many of us drink mineral water, which has solids inside of it, but we need to make sure that the total amount of solids that are in our drinking water are below a certain level. The World Health Organization has standards for TSD. Anything above 1,000 milligrams per liter is considered poor or bad and shouldn't be drinking. If the amount is below 300 milligrams per liter, that's considered excellent or really, really good water. And anything below 600 milligrams per liter is considered good. So these are the targets that we're gonna have and we'll be able to test that with this TSD monitor. Once we do that and we say, okay, our water is good, we can then switch this three-way valve and have our water going into our fresh water tanks knowing that the water is good, isn't contaminated or full of a bunch of salt. So now we're done. We have made fresh water from salt water. But are we really done? The thing is, the reverse osmosis membrane is really sensitive. It's sensitive to all kinds of things like shock loading, if we put too much pressure on it too quick, but it also really needs to be used. If we use it once and let it sit for a month, it's gonna go bad. It will dry up and it will have bacteria in it. So we need to try to prevent that to increase the life of our reverse osmosis membrane. So we have a way to do that on board Polar Seal. And magically, I make it all out this way. So the first piece of our flushing system is this timer. And the timer is connected to our house water system. And we can open the valve or set a time manually of how long that water should run, or we could send a weekly amount and have it run once a week for maybe 10 minutes. So that's the first piece of our flushing system. The next piece is another one of these 10 inch filters. And this one is a carbon filter. So specifically why we need a carbon filter is because the reverse osmosis membrane is very sensitive to chemicals, oil and chlorine especially. So a scenario could be that our water tank is filled with half water from our water maker and half water from a marina tap. And that marina tap may have a lot of chlorine in it. And if we fresh wash our reverse osmosis membrane with chlorinated water, we could damage it. Running that water through a carbon filter will make sure that that chlor chlorination is out and the water is safe to rinse with. From there, we're then gonna connect it to this one-way valve, which we talked about earlier in the video. The one-way valve will then connect into these very fine-looking filters, which we saw earlier, and go into our water maker system. So these are the water filters. The reason that we use one-way valves here is because we're going to have our salt water feeding through this pipe into the system. If I didn't have a one-way valve here, we would have salt water flowing both into our water maker, but also into our fresh water system, which could potentially contaminate it. Thus the reason for having these two one-way valves here. If you're interested in a water maker, there's generally two paths you can go, an off-the-shelf system or a DIY system. There's many different manufacturers of off-the-shelf systems, Spectra, Rain Man, Ecotec, to name a few. 
These systems can generally run at a cost between five dollars to $10,000, depending on size and options. The reason these can be so expensive is on the electronic side. They may have means to start and stop the system automatically or other sensors included within. They may also have different filters in order to keep the footprint small, and that may increase the cost of the system. Also, some of these off-the-shelf systems have special energy recovery pumps, which essentially allow the system to produce water using less electricity, and those pumps come at a cost. Some of the advantages of these off-the-shelf systems is that they can have a smaller footprint, they can be easier to install, they can use a little bit less power, and they can come with customer support. Sometimes good, sometimes not so good, but they can come with customer support. But there's another way to do it, and that's to build your own water maker, and that's the path we've chosen on Polar Seal. All of the parts that we've shown you today can be procured pretty much anywhere, a hardware store, a chandlery, or on the internet. And obviously that comes with a substantial cost savings. Depending on the motor that you get or the pump that you get, the cost can be anywhere between one to $3,000. And most of the cost is associated with the membrane, the pressure vessel, and the motor. One of the pros to the system is obviously the cost. With a reduction of close to three times the amount, it's easy to see why somebody may want to go that route. And that's why we on Polar Seal went that route. Another pro of a system is that you're building it yourself. So you know every aspect of the system, which leads to the third pro. And that is that most of the parts that we've talked about today can be procured anywhere. And that makes fixing and maintaining your water maker anywhere in the world so much easier. We do have a few cons though with DIY systems, one of which is efficiency. Because we may not have complex en energy recovery pumps, the system may be less efficient. So what I mean by that is that we're using more amps to create an amount of water versus maybe an off-the-shelf system uses a few less amps to create that same amount of water. Another con of the system is that we are going to have to spend a pretty significant amount of time scouring the internet to find all the parts or going to the hardware store and maybe something fits, maybe something doesn't. That takes time, and it also takes time to build it. We have to really think through the process before we get going. But there might be a workaround for it. There's a company called Seawater Pro that has taken some of the guesswork and the internet searching out of DIY water maker kit. Think of it as the IKEA for water maker kits, but with pronounceable names. Seawater Pro also gives you the option to include different types of motors or different types of pumps depending on your needs. And one great thing about that is you could switch the pumps or the motor anytime you own the water maker. For example, Seawater Pro has DC versions of motors available, AC motors, different types of pumps, and different types of materials. You can even add a second membrane to your water maker if you think that's necessary. I'd like to give a shout out to Mike at Seawater Pro. He's really been service minded in helping us understand what a water maker is and what we need to look for when going on the DIY route. So if you're interested in Seawater Pro, there's gonna be a link below in this video. You can click it and check it out and see what they're all about. What you've seen in this video is a 12 volt motor with a brass pump and a single membrane. But if you want to make a little bit more water, you can add a second membrane to that. In the coming video, we're gonna show you how to install a DIY water maker. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this series, consider subscribing. If you wanna support our video production and help us make better technical videos, go to ryanandsophie.com slash join the crew. Thank you for watching. It was great having you here. If you have a question, remember to leave it below and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.